the question came up this morning on my Versicam uh, about trying to remove a background from a picture so that they could create a wall graphic of a person. And uh, I think that I can do a fairly quick video of this. I did the, pro the same project that was asked for the Versicam class this past weekend uh, using the picture that you see here. So I'm going to try to go around it real quick to give you an idea of what I would do and then show you the finished results. So we've got a picture of Irv here from one of the previous classes. And what we're going to do is we're going to trace around him using the Bezier tool, which I like you can either use the Bezier, some people use the freehand pen or any other number tools, but I prefer to use the Bezier tool. And the first thing that we're going to do though is to lock the picture so I'm not moving that around. So I left click on it, then right click to select lock object. And you can see the little lock symbol that shows up now so that uh, the picture won't move around. Next, I'll pick my Bezier tool, and I'm going to zoom in using my scroll to a spot on there that I can see fairly close and get an idea. Now, at first, I'm just going to go with points around this. I'm going to go point there, point here, and start working my way around the graphic. I'm not looking for anything perfect at all because I can come back in and adjust those curves after everything's done once I've got a closed object. So I can round everything out later on. But you can see I can draw pretty fast around this entire thing and get most of the spots in here. It's sort of like if you've ever done digitizing for embroidery, very similar concept to that. It's going to take me a few minutes to work my way around. So just kind of bear with me and see what's going on. I pick the highs and lows in each one of the areas. Now, I'll probably have nodes, more nodes than I need in this entire graphic when I'm done, but I can go back and with the Bezier tool, I can edit those nodes and remove whatever I don't want. And I can also curve out areas so that I can get the final object to be what we want. And once we're done with that, we can simply power clip the photo into that object and then assign the cut contour color to the outline of that object. I see I was a little bit out on his arm there, but again, no big deal. I can come back and edit it. Areas like around this hand, when we get down into the fingers, I'm going to want to curve around them, but like I said, I can go back and edit that afterwards. So I'll put one here, one at the tip, and one at the other side so I can curve that out. Down in there, again here, tip, point, tip, point, and I'll curve all that out later on. And I see that Irv's already responding to the forum on my other computer here uh, to the same subject. So hopefully he won't be too terrible surprised when his semi-famous face is placed into a video and put out for all on the forum. Kind of an inside joke for a lot of us. Oh, now here I made a bit of a mistake. I did this last time too. I'm going up along here and I really don't need to because the graphic comes straight across here. So what I'll do is I'll just come right back down to this, and later on I'll go delete those nodes that are there. Because it's much easier for me just to come straight across on this and then clip that into the image. So we're getting fairly close to being done here. I just need to finish up the left-hand side of this and uh, come back up to the ear. Again, notice I went to the, the curve right there. I did a tip to the tip of the curve and then over to here. It's much easier when we're going back to edit those on the Bezier tool. So, getting close. And I'm not even playing around with the Bezier tool on the, the curves, which I could see like draw a point here and then curve it out right now. But it's I find it's a lot easier to just adjust them afterwards. Everybody has their own different way of doing it, so, and there's no right or wrong way. Some people will bring it into Corel Photo Paint and do a whole bunch of uh, deleting around the image to try to get it perfect. I like to do it this way because I can go back and edit everything after the fact and still retain the original full image without having lost any of the picture from using a eraser tool or a mask tool or something like that in Corel Photo Paint. Corel Photo Paint is also a great tool to do all this. But like I said, you, you will lose the portions of the original image 
if you use that to mask and delete portions. And once they're gone, you can't ever get them back unless you go back to the original image and then you're kind of back to the starting block on everything. So we're almost done here and I will finish out my curve. So now that's an object. I'll hit F4 so that I can see the whole thing. And you can see I've got this object here with fill properties because I closed it. The two nodes met up at the end. And I can see my nodes down here. Like I said, that uh, I needed to remove those. So I'll zoom in real quick on that. That's an easy fix. I'll go to my shape tool. I'll delete some of these nodes here. And we should be back in no time to just curve there and delete that and we'll right click on this guy see how it kind of looped there it's seeing that as a curve if I right click on there and tell it to align now it goes to align and we've got what we want again F4 I've got the whole image here I can select the image give it no fill I can right click and now it's a cut line on my cut contour color over here then I'll select I can't select the photo so I'll right click on the photo and unlock it and then what I'll do is I'll take the photo, I've got that, it's behind my, my object that I created here. Go to Effects, Power Clip, place inside the container, and it gives me this big arrow that you see here. And I'll select that container and click on it, and now I have Irv, a wall graphic. Now you can see these areas right up here, I'll zoom in on them a bit, they're all chop a block and everything. I can go back to my Shape tool. I can right click on this line right here. Well, let's actually just delete this node. I double click on that node and it's gone. I right click on that line and I tell it to go to a curve. Now I can curve this out until I get where I want. I can just adjust these nodes. Don't, I went a little past there. But I can make it that nice curve that I want. And I would go around the entire object editing these curves until I got everything where I wanted it smoothness wise. Now you can see, like I said, I did this for the class this weekend. On the second page here, I have the one that I smoothed out and I edited the curves and everything. So we'll take this one and I'll select it. I'll right click and copy that guy. And then I'm going to go back to page one. I'm going to extract the contents by right clicking, extract contents. So now they're no longer a part of what was there. I've got to actually put it to the back of the photo here so I can order or back of the page to back of page. And now I see that line that I had there. I'm just going to delete that line so I can show you uh, what I created this weekend. And I paste that other one in. You can see the line there with all the curves edited and everything. Select the picture again. Effects. Power clip. Place inside container. I get that big arrow again. And I select the container. And you can see all my curves are nice and smooth all the way around here because I did all the editing there. So this is a really quick tutorial just meant to give you an idea of uh, a fast way to create a wall graphic and uh, hopefully it's been helpful for you. Thanks for watching.